What I'm going to talk about in this video is one of the darker periods in Chilean history, and depending on your point of view, also one of the darker periods in American history. And, I, and, and what I want to make clear in this video, and it really applies to every video I'll make in history, is be skeptical of everything that I'm telling you. I'm going to do my best attempt to uh, give a, a reasonably accurate uh, series of events and, and, and draw connections when they're clear, and also make it clear where there might be connections and no one is sure. But you should be skeptical. And frankly, you should be skeptical of anything anyone's telling you. And I encourage you all to kind of use this as a scaffold for your own research, for you to look up these, uh, these names and these events and figure out what actually happened. Now with that said, let's rewind back to 1970, when Chile was having an election for president. And they have their election, and it's considered a fairly free and fair election. And one of the candidates in that election was this gentleman over here, Salvador Allende, who is a known Marxist. A known Marxist. He has communist uh, 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 ideologies here. He he's known he is known to be sympathetic to what has happened in Cuba, to sympathetic to the Soviets. And so you can imagine in this context, America is concerned. It's in the middle of the Cold War. You have Richard Nixon president. You have Henry Kissinger is his Secretary of State. They are actively watching this election. They clearly do not want Salvador Allende to become president. All of a sudden, a major country in Latin America being controlled by a Marxist. Unlucky for them, Salvador Allende actually does get more votes than everyone else. He gets 36% of the votes, which is a plurality. And just so you know what plurality means, it means you got more votes than anyone else, but not necessarily the majority of the votes. If he had gotten 51% of the votes, that would be a majority. In this case, he didn't get a majority. And the standard procedure in Chile is that if the, no one gets a majority, it goes to Congress, and Congress picks who's president. And the usual thing that they would do is they would pick whoever has the most the largest amount of votes they normally didn't do a runoff so you can imagine Nixon and Kissinger they're worried so they kind of get into um, let's mess with what's going on in Chile mode and this part is well established that they had this what they called a track one strategy of actively trying to get the Chilean Congress to not do what they normally do to not pick the guy with the largest number of votes so they were trying to mess there it didn't seem like something that they would be able to pull off the other thing that it looks like they started to kind of get involved with through the CIA is they started to they started to at least interface it's not clear how much they actually supported they actually started to talk to people in the military and see well how likely is a coup to happen how likely is Allende to be overthrown if he becomes president they were looking for for people who could i guess keep this 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 known Marxist from becoming president. And the number one problem was this guy right over here. The number pro one problem was this guy right over here. And in this whole video, I would say that Rene Schneider was the only unambiguously good guy in this video. He was the commander in chief of the Chilean military. And he said, look, I don't care you know, who becomes president. I don't care how much I disagree with him. I don't care how much pressure the Americans put on me or how much pressure the rest of the military puts on me. The role of the Chilean military is not to mess with politics. The role, they call him a constitutionalist. The role of the Chilean military is not to overthrow people when we don't like them. The role of the Chilean military is only to defend Chile, is only to literally do what, I guess, you know, what militaries are supposed to do, what constitutions say the military is supposed to do. And so you can imagine that the people who wanted to, to overthrow Allende, now that he's coming to, looks like he's going to come to power, they say, well, you know, this guy is not a convenient guy to have in power. He doesn't like to play the way we play, even though maybe there were other elements in the military that did want to do that. And so, and this is what's a little bit unclear, you have this former general in the Chilean military who is, who is clearly anti-Allende, and he is also anti-Schneider, because this guy right here, Roberto Vio, he thinks that the military should be, uh, I guess, actively overthrowing dictators. And so there is some contact between him and the CIA. It seems like the CIA may have supplied some support to him, and then maybe got a little bit freaked out that, or at least Kissinger might have gotten a little freaked out that this guy seemed a little bit of extreme. But remember, we're in this period where Allende was, he got 36% of the votes, 
Congress is kind of trying to figure out what they do about it. And during this period, there are some people who say, well, look, if Rene Schneider is not going to take things, do the, the, what's in their mind the right thing, and uh, depose the eventual INDA, then we'll have to depose Rene Schneider. So you have this plot that's worked up by Roberto Vio to essentially kidnap Rene Schneider. And that would essentially depose him from being head of the military. And maybe they could put someone in his place who is more likely to have a coup, more likely to want to overthrow Allende. Unfortunately, when his people, when this guy's people try to kidnap Schneider, Schneider, he's, you know, he's got a gun. He sees these guys kidnapping. He takes out the gun and then the kidnappers shoot him several times and he eventually dies. So they this essentially turns into this kidnapping turns into an assassination of Rene Schneider and they wanted to kill him just because or uh, or remove him or whatever just because he essentially wanted to do his job. So he's the only person in this whole narrative where I'll say he was an unambiguous he was an unambiguous good guy. Now what's not clear is how much of involvement the Americans or the CIA had in supporting this this kind of assassination or this kidnapping of Schneider. It does look like they kind of knew that something was going on. This is a quote from Kissinger, seems pretty well substantiated, where he told Nixon a few days before Schneider was assassinated, when Nixon said, "Hey, what's going on in Chile? Are, are we are we working on any you know ways through the military, and are we doing anything about potentially maybe about Schneider? I don't know. Look that up for yourself. I don't know how much Nixon may or may not have known." Kissinger told Nixon, "This looks hopeless. I turned it off. Nothing could be worse than an abortive coup." So this quote is interesting because it looks like. They thought about it. I mean, I turned it off, which implies that at one point he had it turned on. So at one point they were actively thinking about working with Roberto Vio, maybe to kidnap Schneider, maybe to orchestrate maybe to orchestrate a coup against Allende, but they turned it off. So it's definitely not, they're not morally above doing this type of thing. But they decided that this guy was a little bit, was not as competent as maybe they thought he should. And at least according to Kissinger, he's saying, we turned it off because nothing could be worse than an abortive coup. And it turned out that's exactly what happened. Because as soon as this guy got killed, everyone's like, oh my god, you have all of these shady elements who are trying to uh, kind of overthrow democracy. And that actually put more pressure on on Congress to say, hey, we have to let Allende become president. So in November, he gets inaugurated president. November, Allende, Allende becomes president. And this is always, you know, there's a bunch of uh, different stories here, how much the CIA was involved. The, the counter argument is, like, the, look, the CIA would not have wanted to assassinate Schneider because this would have only made it made Allende all the more popular. They would have only maybe wanted to uh, remove him and put someone else there who is more likely to have a coup against Allende later. Who knows? If you believe what K the Kissinger's words here, it looks like he, you know, maybe they provided some initial support to Vio and then they backed off a little bit. Who knows? Well, regardless to say, by November of 1970, Salvador Allende became president. And he started implementing his kind of Marxist ideology. And it was didn't go that well. The uh, Ch Chile's economy, especially if you fast forward to 1972, 1973, not doing so well. He started doing price fixing. He tried to do the you know the fairly naive approach of raising salaries while keeping prices fixed, which will obviously lead to shortages. So all around, he wasn't the most popular president. It didn't look like, his, especially his economic policies were working out that well. People who are pro Allende would say, well, look. It, just like what the United States did to Cuba, they started doing to Chile as soon as they had a Marxist in charge, someone they didn't like. The United States started kind of swinging its huge economic power around to kind of hurt the Chilean economy so that this guy would come out of power. I'd lead, let you uh, decide that. You fast forward all the way to 1973. So now Allende has been in power for about three years. Things are not going well for him. I mean, there there are there are strikes going on. He tries to clamp down on the media a bit. There are um, there are there is unrest. There are people who definitely do not want him to be president anymore. And 
you know, the, the people who, who are, you know, who, who don't think much of the United States will say, hey, but the United States the whole time was kind of actively undermining I and A, and that's probably true. The United States will say, no, look, we were trying to keep the press free. This guy was clamping down on free press. We were trying to, we were trying to keep things so that there will be a, another election, so that this guy won't turn into another Fidel Castro and essentially just turn Chile into a totalitarian communist regime. Regardless of which side you take, on September 11th, 1973, Allende is deposed. He gets the, the the military surrounds the presidential palace, and it is said that he commits suicide. And I put that in quotes because once again, some people believe that he really did commit suicide. Some people believe that he was assassinated. And some accounts say that he committed a suicide with an automatic weapon. And well, I guess you could commit suicide with an automatic weapon, but it doesn't seem like the the weapon of choice for for many people. But I, I I'll leave that once again for you to decide. Um, maybe it's not even well whether whether or not he committed suicide or whether he was killed. But regardless, say September 11th, he he gets thrown out of power. And once again, it's not clear what role what role the CIA played. They clearly were sympathetic to the people who wanted to overthrow them. They it clearly were support uh, were providing indirect support throughout Allende's regime to all of the people who were anti Allende and you could look up so there actually are some declassified documents that hint at what the level of CIA involvement might have been. Regardless to say Allende dis- deposed and this gentleman this gentleman comes to power right over here. Augusto Pinochet. And he comes to power and he says, look, you know, this democracy thing is silly. I am the president. I am the commander in chief. Chile will be run by military junta. And let me write that down, word right down. Chile will be run by a junta. And a junta just means a government that's run by the military. The military will, it's a military dictatorship. The military is now in charge of Chile. We don't need people to do silly things like voting anymore. And you can imagine Nixon didn't care so much that this guy didn't like democracy, but he was happy. Let me see if I could put a smile on his face. He was happy that at least Pinochet was not a Marxist, that at least uh, we, have, we have spread, we have stopped the spread of communism in Latin America. Unfortunately, and, and Nixon with that said, he, he and this is explicit, he wanted to do everything in his power to make to make Augusto Pinochet successful, especially from an economic point of view. So Nixon does, we do, the United States does start does start supporting Pinochet. He's viewed as kind of an American friend. Unfortunately for America and unfortunately for Chile, this guy is one of those big time tyrants in history. So he is a tyrant. And he starts rounding up people. He starts killing people. He starts dis- He's one of those people that anything, anyone who had, there was a whiff of communism or a whiff of political opposition, he would round them up. He would round their family up. He would torture people. And just to kind of put some and this is another picture of him when he's older. And it's amazing how how gentle some fairly evil people can look in the world. So I'll put some unambiguous horns on him. But he 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 killed many many people, and did many many people disappeared. And just to give an idea of what this what you know, these are some of the people who disappeared. And it was anyone from people who were critical of him, people who were uh, perceived to be left-leaning, whatever it was, and, it, and he tortured, including uh, women and children and, and all the rest. So all around, bad guy. He stuck around in Chile as president until 1990, so that's 17 years. And he really stayed in power until 1998, where he was commander-in-chief of the army. You can imagine, if the military is in control, President isn't that important of a title. Commander in chief is. So for 25 years, he hung around Chile, and he continued to be kind of this totalitarian uh, uh, guy. Although he was a big, he liked free markets. He was a capitalist in the traditional sense. And the one, I guess, silver lining that if if you had to throw a silver lining on P- Pinochet's regime is that the Chilean economy actually did well during his regime, is that Ch- Chile is considered one of the uh, success stories economically over that time period. So I'll, I'll let you decide. And some people will say, oh, that's because Pinochet was, uh, you know, he understood economics. He didn't try to do all of this price fixing stuff that Allende tried to do, regardless of the fact that he was a, a tyrant. At, at, at least people, you know, the economy was doing well. 
The other side of the equation would be, well, look, of course the economy did well. Now you had the United States. Now you had the United States doing everything in its power, this huge, the largest economy in the world, doing everything in its power to make sure that Chile's economy thrives while one of its buddies are in power. So I'll let you decide what's, who's right, who's wrong, what, were the actual, what was the actual involvement of the CIA and Nixon and Kissinger and all of this mess over here. But I think needless to say uh, that this was a not so pleasant uh, chapter in, 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 I guess, world history.